Welcome to Sometimes There's Side Eye, a podcast about two friends having real and unfiltered conversations about dogs and people. Listen as we talk about our lives with dogs, training, behavior, share some laughs, and a whole lot of banter. I'm Heather. And I'm Christy. What are we talking about this week, Heather? We are going to talk about the ever so popular statement, advocate for your dog. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's really hard. Yeah, it rolls off the tongue real easy, but when you put it in practice, it's a little harder. It can be really, really difficult. And I think that it can be difficult, more difficult on different days based on how bad a day you're having. (laughs) Yeah, and for a variety of reasons. Yeah. And depending on the situation and the people you're Mm -hmm. around and a whole gamut of different scenarios. So we're going to talk about a particular situation that happened to me recently. And I have been just trying out a whole bunch of different places to train with Trin and just sort of getting out there with her, trying to build my bond with her. But wait, aren't you a dog trainer, a puppy trainer? <sighs> yeah, but I've been doing group classes with her to help build oh, up our so relationship. To that. Yeah. yeah. So I, I don't, we've talked before about whether or not, yeah. you know, puppy classes are a value, whatever. I hadn't intended to actually do a puppy class with Trin, but then my husband said to me, hey, maybe you should do that so that you can really start to bond with her and it might be a good idea. And honestly, he was right. And so that's why I decided to do it. I just really like to train my dogs and like be out there doing things with them. So anyway. And I'll be honest, training with a group of people or in a training class, I find even though I'm less social than Heather, I still find it more fun than just training by myself at my own house. Well, and you do have different experiences and your puppy has different experiences. So I think my aversion to puppy training is really comes down to poor puppy training. (laughs) That's really what it's about. Um, If you and I ran a puppy class, I think that I would be all for it. Not because I think that we're perfect, but because I think that we would follow what is more of today's standards. And based on the, you know, the science that we have today. So anyway, I've been doing a variety of different classes with Trin and I had an experience. It was in a class that I had paid for for six weeks. And after week four, I chose not to go back. I (laughs) sent Christy a very long voice note on the way home because I had a bad experience there with my dog. And it's really difficult because we have talked on this podcast before about advocating for your dog. And I think I've even said that I would have no issue telling someone that, you know, if they did something I wasn't comfortable with, just saying, hey, I'm not doing that. And then I found myself in a brand new to me training facility Mm -hmm. with people who have been around for decades and are very well respected. And I had an incident with my puppy that I was completely not comfortable with. And I allowed it to happen. And I walked away feeling so shitty. And then as the moments and the drive and the miles went on, I felt shittier and shittier. And so I had said to Christy, you know, it's so easy to say, advocate for your dog, but what does Mm -hmm. that really look like? And me being an outspoken person and everything else, I even had a tough time for, I felt a lot of social pressure for a lot of different reasons. And I didn't speak up for my dog and I feel like really crap about it. And Trin's fine. I I don't want to give specifics just because I'm, I don't want to call somewhere out, but it it was a situation that made me really uncomfortable and I feel like was an aversive interaction for my dog. And it is not some, not the way I would ever train this particular behavior. And it really, really affected me. Mm -hmm. I'm getting like a little emotional about it because not only did it happen once, I allowed it to happen twice. 
And I thought that I could manipulate the situation the second time to make sure my puppy was successful and to make sure that she didn't have this aversive experience. And I failed again. And so then I felt double shitty because I had let her, I had put her in the situation unexpectedly and then expectedly I put her in the situation. Right. And that sucks. It does. Yeah. Yeah. So I just wanted to talk about it. Yeah. And just to, one, first of all, thank you for being vulnerable and sharing that because I think people need to know if you've let that happen, you're not alone. And it's so easy to be an outsider looking in and say, well, I would have dot, dot, dot. But Heather and I have both had situations where we're caught in the moment where we're like, oh, I shouldn't have let that happen, but it's happening Mm -hmm. and I don't feel comfortable saying no, or Mm -hmm. I don't feel comfortable stepping in. So first of all, thank you. Also, I want to say, just in case someone's thinking like, oh, what? Oh my goodness. What did you do? The response I sent to Heather partially was, we have both done far worse to our dogs Mm. on accident thinking we were doing what was best for them Mm -hmm. in the past. It hits harder now because we know better. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I don't think the the action itself, like you said, Trin is fine. We've both done things that (laughs) that could have damaged our dogs far worse. Yeah. But once you know better, like you don't, you do better or you want to do better. You want to do better. Back, it feels really icky. It felt so, so icky. And I, you know, it's really tough because in this situation, I know that these people are well-respected and successful. And I know that their dogs are competing at extremely high levels. And Mm -hmm. I've seen it, you know, I've seen them out with their dogs and obviously the, their methods are working, right? Because otherwise they wouldn't be where they are. But one of the things that kept running through my mind is something that we talk about all the time, which is what does that relationship look like? And mm-hmm. if I walk away and I know that I could have taught Trin something in a kinder way, mm-hmm. That is damaging to our relationship because I'm carrying that, you know, like do it, do it better because there's a, you know, a way to do it better. And when, when I say better, I think I mean kinder in this moment. Um, it just felt like I was really, I couldn't even talk to Christy about it. You guys for, for days, like I was really, really, truly affected by it because Mm -hmm. I feel like I am a knowledgeable person and Mm -hmm. even I could not protect my puppy in this scenario. And maybe that sounds dramatic, but I really do want my puppies to have like these positive experiences. Mm -hmm. And so I do want to protect them. And the thing that we were working on, I know how to teach it in a kind Mm -hmm. way. So then Mm -hmm. to have it be done with this aversive experience, I'm just like, ooh, why? And it just, so it felt really, really offensive to me, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think more so offensive to, because we say people will train differently, Mm -hmm. but offensive to you because it's your own puppy and your responsibility to step in. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I handed and I handed my leash of my puppy to yeah. someone else. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and they they did this. Like I handed her over, right? Yeah. So then that makes you feel this really heavy responsibility. Yeah. I put her in that situation. And mm-hmm. that sucks. Especially and when I thought I could protect her. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And I kind of want to go into a couple of things with that. So why do you feel like there was a social pressure. You said from multiple angles. Mm -hmm. Can you share like a little bit about what you were feeling and that pressure? Well, I think the pressure comes from these people being highly accomplished, being local, Mm -hmm. all of those things that I already said. Mm -hmm. And then there were five or six other teams there 
and no one else said anything. Mm -hmm. So there's that too. Am I the only one who thinks that this is not okay? Mm -hmm. So there's that question. And then on top of that, I don't know any of these people personally. Mm -hmm. Whereas if it would have been someone in another situation where I knew the people, I'd have been like, yeah, I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. So I think it was a multi-layered social pressure Mm -hmm. and that sort of stacked up on top of each other that Mm -hmm. made me not say anything. And then I, as I was going home, I was like, should I have just grabbed her like mid exercise and been like, put on a big display and been like, I'm not doing this. Like what would have been appropriate in that situation Mm -hmm. too? How could I have handled it? without making it this big dramatic display or was a big dramatic display warranted? I don't know. I honestly Mm -hmm. don't know what would have been the right thing to do in that situation. And maybe that's part of the problem too, is like, shit, what should I have done? Yeah. And I think, so we're addressing a couple of really important things I think here. One, when somebody has authority, Mm -hmm. Whether that authority is because they are an expert in their field or they're in a position over you or however that authority gets there, Mm -hmm. it is really tough Mm -hmm. to, to buck that. Yeah. And I am a person who would like to say like, oh, I will question whatever I will, you know, but in the heat of the moment, it is tough. Yeah. And granted, I am somebody who told a world-renowned dog trainer that I was I would not take a dog from her to return it to a kennel at the shelter unless it had two leashes on. Uh-huh. And I was like hard and fast in that because I thought I was going to get bit. Yeah. However, I am also a person who has been in a situation in a training class that was supposed to be only positive training and some things came up and... And I asked the trainer, hey, I'm not comfortable. Please don't. My dog has a phobia of of some walking sticks. Please don't use the stick with her. And she did anyway to test my dog. And I felt very betrayed. But I also didn't say anything more Mm -hmm. on that. I just stepped between the dog and the stick and Mm -hmm. moved the dog away. Mm -hmm. And that was like the gentlest I could do it. But I didn't Mm -hmm. know, like part of me afterwards was the same. Like I should have been like, what are you doing? I already told you no. Like, you know, make a display. But in the moment, I there was a paralysis that happened with authority. And Mm -hmm. I, I think it's so easy to say you should advocate for your dog. But sometimes in the moment, there is an authoritative paralysis that we experience. Yeah. And, and I just want to like recognize that for everybody, especially you have this expertise Mm -hmm. in training. And, and so a lot of times I think coming into training, people also think, huh, I, I don't feel comfortable with that. However, I mean, my dog's a mess Yeah, and their dog isn't. Yeah. So I guess I should just keep going with it. And there are trainers who will say, Mm -hmm your dog's a mess and my dog isn't. You need to trust what I'm doing. Yeah. But I also think there's a better way to do that for trainers to say, hey, are we comfortable here? Or, you know, here's what I'm going to do. Yeah. uh, Those types of things. And I, you know, I said to Trin's breeder, I chose not to go back to the class. Mm -hmm. I forfeited the rest of my money and whatever. What I think about is all of the people that will continue to go And Mm -hmm. they think this is the way that we train. Mm -hmm. And I just, I feel like that's really unfortunate. It Um, It really is. And as we've discussed, I think that there are different ways to train. And I'm not going to tell anyone what they should and shouldn't do. But I don't think that starting with aversives on a, at the time, five month old puppy who is 16 pounds is the way we train. Right. Also, when you have set them up in a training scenario that is literally impossible for them to be successful in, Mm -hmm. which is what this was. And so I know you said you've thought through, well, what could I have done Mm -hmm. differently? I'm just wondering, because I do want to give people some some options kind of like to think through maybe beforehand. Yeah. And I'm wondering if 
I had a thought. Okay, go ahead. I had a thought. I I thought, thought yeah, (laughs) I wish after it happened the first time, because I Mm -hmm. didn't know what was going to happen, right? And then it happened. I wish I had said, I think she has to go potty. Mm. Okay. And we had removed because that would have been a very non-confrontational way to miss the rest of that particular exercise. And I could have just given my dog a break after she had what I feel was an uncomfortable experience. Mm-hmm. And I could have reconnected with her and mm-hmm. we could have just avoided the whole thing. And then I wouldn't have had to make a display or make a show or anything else. Yeah. I honestly wish that's what I would have done. What was your thought? Well, there's, okay. So (laughs) now I have a couple thoughts. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) What if you would have taken her out potty and thinking, okay, it's been long enough and come back in and said, oh, Heather, you missed this. So we'll do this with your dog now. Oh, fuck my life. Right? Like that's an, yeah, that's a possibility. Yeah. You know, like, Hey, we don't want you to miss out on this just because your dog had to potty. Yeah, I think like it, in perfect world, it'd be like, it's okay, we'll practice at home. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> but but would we be able to be like in that moment? Probably not. Yeah, and I think it's, so I do think it's And then we're not the advocating moment. for our dog. I'm just right. avoiding. Right, right. Which is, we're just, and sometimes avoidance is yeah. a form of advocating. Yeah. Like, let's just be honest. One thing I think- as I'm looking for a new dog, I'm sure we will be going through training classes mm-hmm. just because I like training. It's fun. Heather put the training bug in me <laughs> um, and I, I enjoy it now. So I do think if I go to a new training facility with a trainer that I don't know, or that is not, I'm not comfortable with, don't have history with rather, mm-hmm. I think I might ask at the beginning of classes now, Hey, if I'm uncomfortable with an exercise what is a way I could say hey I'd like to opt out without making a scene for oh that for I people. love that and then it just puts that up front of hey there may be things I'm gonna opt out of with my dog but also I'm not here to make a display yeah I love that you know what else I realized too hmm. what's one of the things that I taught you when we started going to training classes together I have no idea you taught me a lot <laughs> that you can go and watch a class. Yes, absolutely. So I broke my own rule. Not that it's a rule, but right. I, this is, I didn't do that. And if I mm-hmm. would have done that with this class, I would have not gone. Oh, Here's why I didn't do it. What happened was I was feeling kind of shitty because mm-hmm. I I'm working really hard to bond with Trin and there, there's nothing wrong with Trin. This is, this is my shit baggage right sure and I was voicing (laughs) that sounded a little too on board with you said your shit baggage I'm like yeah sure Mm -hmm." (laughs) sorry lots of baggage shit (laughs) I did Um, not mean to be that (laughs) on board with that so agreeable thanks man (laughs) and so I was voicing this to my husband on a Saturday yeah. And he made the suggestion of going to a class on Sunday. I Googled, I okay. found this class that was starting on Monday. I sent a message, said, do you have a spot open? They said yes. And boom, I went. So okay. I didn't follow my normal protocol. And I don't think I will ever do that again, unless I personally know I'm the person leading the class and feel mm-hmm. super comfortable with yeah. what's happening. And what ended up happening after this was that I did join a different class without going. However, I spoke to four different people about this person first and asked very specific questions Mm -hmm. about their training style and different things about the class and decided to move forward. So I think it was a bit of a rash decision And that led me down a road that I wish I hadn't gone on. So that too. But I love your suggestion of just saying to the trainer from the get-go, and maybe you don't even say that I'm not comfortable with. Maybe you say that I don't feel my dog is ready for or whatever. We're just going to opt out. I do really love that. I think that that's a really good idea. I wish I had done that for my dog. Well, and you, you live and you learn, right? Yeah. You, 
experience something and then you have to think through yeah what could I do differently how could I make this not happen and there's going to be other Mm -hmm. situations that were like well did not see that coming Mm -hmm. did not think that through so how could I prevent that from happening again I know when we did scent work Lucy was never crate trained and I wasn't going to crate train her at 10 years old for a scent class that just wasn't happening and so I had asked about could I still do the the class without crate training and the Mm -hmm. main instructor said no but the owner of the facility said, I know this dog, mm-hmm. she can come. Mm-hmm. And I did try, I was like, well, maybe I could just try an X pen or mm-hmm. maybe I could try this or could I go to the back of the class? And it turned out then everybody was like, oh, she's fine. Just let her sit next to you. It's yeah. Fine. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. And it's okay to ask for exceptions, but also be okay if they say no. If they say no. Yeah. 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 And I think it's important to also be okay with throwing your money away like you did. I mean, throwing, I'm putting that in quotes, but mm-hmm. throwing your money away in that if it's not working for you, it's not working for you. Yep. I, Lucy and I went to an agility class and I think at the time I paid 150 bucks for it. And that was a lot of money for me at the time. And we were not favorites in that class. Yeah. <laughs> and I just thought it was a pretty toxic environment for her. Yeah. Even though she was having some fun, she was over threshold. She was riled up because there were so many barking dogs and who are spinning and barking and doing all the things. And she was like, everybody shut up. Yeah. <laughs> and I just thought, nah, I'm going to, I'm just going to peace out on this and think, yeah, this was a $150 lesson for me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was definitely a $80 lesson with a whole lot of emotional shit tied to it. A lot of emotional baggage. Yeah. Yeah. I did email. Remember we were discussing like, what am I going to do about the last two questions? Mm -hmm. So I just emailed and said, Trin and I won't be there. And I left it at that because I don't think there's anything, nobody's going to change their training style. I am not going to make some revolution. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, And it's not my job to, to to change everyone's mind. Do that. Yeah. Yeah. Even if I thought that I could, which I, I will not, it's just not even part of it, you know, but it, it definitely, whoo. That it was a lot. I really struggled with how, like, all my feelings about it after. Yeah. And I think it's because we, I don't think it's about we love our dogs more or we this no. or we that. It's, it's literally just, I have a certain way that I would like to raise my puppy. Mm-hmm. And I want to make sure that I'm in in control of that and in charge Mm -hmm. of that and that I'm cultivating the experiences I want her to have. And I didn't, I I was not feeling that way at all. And there's, I have personal reasons as to why I want Mm -hmm. to do things the way I'm doing it. And so, yeah, that was tough. It's, it's definitely a lesson. Yeah. I also want to put the warning out there to people to if you're if you're looking for dog training and something says it's positive reinforcement, don't take that at face value. Really dig in, I would say, and if you can, visit the class. If you can't, you know, look at the website, talk to people who have used them, mm-hmm. all those things. Because what I've found is not everyone's as positive as maybe you think think when yeah. you, everyone's positive reinforcement definition seems to be on a sliding scale. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm sure no, ours there's, are, yeah. there's no management on that. Right. People can use it willy nilly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I've met trainers who have these force free or positive reinforcement titles. And I know for a fact that they use aversives mm-hmm. with their dog. I'm not saying that that's wrong to use the aversive. I'm just saying it is misleading yes. to say you're positive only or put that out there as if you're positive only when you're using aversives. Mm-hmm. And so, and they may not even realize they, I honestly believe they probably don't think of some of their aversives as aversive. They just so. think of it as a, 
training method. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think some, some are, I mean, of course you have people are, people Mm -hmm. are people. So you're going to have a mixed bag there, but just know for yourself Mm -hmm. and go in the more time you spend with a trainer, honestly, you're going to be more comfortable. Like the balance trainer that I've gone to, I'm totally comfortable saying, I'm not doing this. I am doing this. We're going to do this. Is that okay? Because mm-hmm. I, I also don't want to be disrespectful. I don't right. want to come in and say, I'm doing this now. Right. She's like, that doesn't go with our plan yeah. at all. Yeah. But I, I do feel pretty comfortable saying, hey, these are the things I want to do. Mm-hmm. We won't be doing these things. Is that okay with you? Mm-hmm. Yep. And, and that just comes from time of like, we've been working together for like eight years. You mm-hmm. know, that just comes from building trust and relationship with each other. Yeah. Too. If this had happened in a different training scenario that I've been in before, I would have had no problem saying, Hey, I'm not doing that because I had a relationship and a rapport with that person. And I would have, would have had absolutely zero issue saying that. And in fact, I think we have said that to, to this person, yeah. Um, yeah. but it's also like great if you have another person who yeah. is on the same page. Cause I remember a situation where we did say no, but there was a moment of awkward silence mm-hmm. and I can't remember who said no first, mm-hmm. but once we both said no, everyone else said no. There was well. solidarity in that. Yeah. yeah. And it was like five of us then that yeah. said no. Like once, once one person said no, everyone was like, yeah, I'm not doing that either. Yeah. And to be honest, I just, I cannot believe that there was not another single person in that room that didn't feel, ew, this is icky, but none of us said anything. Mm -hmm. And so I also want to say, man, some days advocacy is harder than others. And You know, we've said before about talking about spoons, some days you have enough spoons to really speak up and, and be present and be your best self. And some days you don't, and some Mm -hmm. days you have a rough day at work or you didn't sleep well, or you're not feeling well, or you have a family member who's having issues, whatever. Some days it is harder than others. And so I would say to everybody out there, if you have a situation like I did, don't do not do what I did. Don't mm-hmm. fall down uh, that shame rabbit hole um, right. and really take days to sit with it and process it and then finally talk to your friend and tell them what happened. Give yourself some grace and mm-hmm. be kind. Trin is fine. Sure. Um, she is completely unaffected thankfully. And she has, she has no memory of this happening. Um, (laughs) This is all me. And just kind of be, be gentle with yourself because some days are better than others and some days are harder than others. And that's just kind of the way that life goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And and find ways that you can maybe ask for space and just say, Hey, is it okay if I take a break right now? Hey, I need, Ooh, yeah. I need just a little, a second of time. Do you mind if I just sit this one out? Mm-hmm. I mean, if they say no, like maybe. Maybe, maybe that's not. like a whole nother. <laughs> yeah. But I haven't seen a lot of people when you ask, say, I need space or I need, I a, need break. a break. That's true. Um, people typically don't say, no, you don't. Mm-hmm. Get back in here. I mean, yeah. unless it's like a one of your coaches for like a physical activity, yeah, like yeah, a running coach or something. Yeah, you need to be, you don't or your do boss. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good point. I mean, at the end of the day, yes, the trainer who's in charge of the class is in a position of authority, but also mm-hmm. you are a customer and you are paying to be there. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's a point too. Absolutely. It's tough, yeah. isn't it? It's so tough. It is because it it feels like it should be so simple. Mm-hmm. It feel in our brain, we all say, "I would just, I would just do X." What's our best advice? Our best advice, I would say, think through what you are and aren't comfortable with. Research where you're going to take your dog or puppy. And I would say communicate with the trainer beforehand Mm -hmm. as well. 
I would also say if you can have the opportunity to go with a friend, that's amazing. Yes. Yeah. I really like that. I would also add if something happens, shake it off. Don't carry it with you. Really, there are very few scenarios that are going to happen. It is rare that something is going to happen in a training class, in a group training setting Mm -hmm. with your dog that is going Mm -hmm. to have any sort of lasting effect. Rare. It can happen, but it's Mm -hmm. rare. So if Mm -hmm. something does happen, go do something fun with your dog. Replace that memory. Go do your favorite thing with them. Take them for Mm -hmm. a fucking puppuccino. I don't care. But let let it let yourself have some grace and some space to kind of you know shake it off. And that's as that's probably more for you than even your dog. Yeah, totally. You know? <laughs> I was just thinking, definitely yeah. Taylor Swift's "Shake It Off" popped in my head. But I mean, it's very apt right <laughs> here. The song "Go and Get a Puppetino" because <laughs> your dog shakes it off, and really, we yeah. need to shake it off too. Yeah. 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 And then, you know, actively work on preventing those situations, Mm -hmm. of course, because they're detrimental to you as well. Mm -hmm. Training should be fun. Yep. Having a, owning a dog should be fun. Yep. Fun work. I agree. Yeah. If you've enjoyed this episode, subscribe, rate, and share us wherever you get your podcasts. Also, come on over to Instagram and engage with us at sometimes their side eye. Thanks for listening, everybody. Talk to you next time. Bye. Bye.